Hi, I have finally found and been able to afford five new elements besides the 69 I have already shown in previous episodes. I will show you the new beautiful and beastly samples and their reaction near a magnet. All five are a little on the hazardous side, so let's change my usual hazard roulette to something more chemistry oriented. Like this. Ah oh, yes, looking good. I will need all of these symbols and more for the just five elements in this video. Only handle any of them yourself if you are aware of and accept all dangers. I mentioned the worst, but this is not a safety instructions video. I just want to show you what the high purity elements look like and how they react near a magnet. With that said, let's start with the least hazardous of the five. It's a reactive metal that should be kept away from air and water. Finely divided, it can even ignite itself in air. Don't extinguish the fire with water since this element forms explosive hydrogen from water. It is also an irritant to eyes and skin, but fairly easy to handle. It is strontium. Pure strontium is rarely used for anything, so you may only have heard about it as the radioactive isotope strontium-90. That is produced in nuclear reactors and not something you want to be exposed to by accident. But this sample is natural strontium with only non-radioactive stable isotopes. The sample is stored under mineral oil but still clearly corroded. For the magnetist, I am taking it out of its protective environment. Let's see how it reacts to a magnet. Is it repelled or attracted? It is clearly attracted by the magnet. Officially, it is the most paramagnetic of the alkaline earth metals with a value of plus 92. Seems right, looking at this noticeable but still weak reaction. If you were wondering what would have happened if the strontium fell off the styrofoam boat and into the water, I test it with a small piece here. Quite a reaction. A lot of hydrogen bubbles are formed as the strontium turns into white strontium hydroxide. The next element is a beast. Make sure you don't come in any contact with this one. It is very toxic and volatile, so don't breathe its fumes. It is corrosive, even to stainless steel, and it is a danger to the environment. Yeah, don't handle this one. Bromine is something as unusual as an element that is liquid at normal temperatures and pressures. Only mercury has this property too, making bromine the only non-metallic liquid element at normal living conditions. I'm glad this is in a sealed glass ampule. Halogens are not easy to keep trapped. Look how another of my halogens has ended up in storage. This iodine sample has found a way out and stained all of the paper insert in the box. Good thing that the toxic fumes of bromine isn't given the same chance to escape. It's not optimal for the magnet test, but I will have to include the glass in the test. It is repelled by the magnet, which makes sense since both glass and bromine are diamagnetic. The official value for bromine is diamagnetism with a value of minus 56.4. From one beast to a close relative, Next element is an oxidizer, very toxic to us and aquatic life, irritant to skin and eyes, and damaging to organs. My sample is also under pressure inside a glass ampule, so there's a risk of a rupture with sharp glass fragments flying around. Besides high cost and low availability, I'm starting to realize why I haven't bought and shown these samples sooner. Chlorine is another halogen. It is usually a gas at standard temperature and pressure, but stored on its own vapor pressure, it is a liquid. At the temperature in my living room, the pressure inside the ampule is close to 8 bars. Heated by my hands, it could go above 10 bars, so I'm using a face shield and making sure I don't heat this ampule. Liquid chlorine is actually common in the industry since it has many uses, for example in the manufacture of the plastic PVC. Once again, I have no choice but to include the glass ampule in the magnet test. Mm. 
This was not easy to detect, but using a bigger magnet up close, I got a reaction. A weak repulsion in accordance with the diamagnetic value for liquid chlorine, minus 40.4. Next up is a corrosive metal that is very reactive, much more than strontium. It can ignite itself in air and in water it releases and ignites hydrogen from the violent reaction. The reaction in water can even cause a coulomb explosion. Great, and I have a large sample of this. This element was shipped in a steel tube and is my most expensive sample. Not in dollars per gram, but from being a large sample. It is... Rubidium. 25 grams of high purity rubidium is more than I really wanted, but it didn't cost much more than the 10 gram sample matching my cesium sample. Here it is compared to the 10 grams of cesium. It's not easy to show the colors of such reflective samples. They tend to reflect the color of the surroundings, but by holding a white piece of paper above them, you can see that the cesium has a golden color, while the rubidium is silvery. Having these near each other reminds me of their important use in extremely precise atomic clocks. Rubidium really doesn't have many uses, but one of them is in atomic clocks, which are cheaper than the ones based on cesium. Now, um, I'm not gonna float this sample on water. A mishap would be catastrophic, but dry mineral oil should be okay. As I'm pouring the oil, I realize how much higher viscosity this has than water. Not great for detecting weak magnetic forces. It also has lower density than water, so I'm gonna need a bigger boat. Here we are. Let's see how rubidium reacts to a magnet. Alright, I'm seeing the effects of eddy currents forming in the rubidium. The sample is repelled by a magnet moving towards it, but attracted by a magnet moving away from it. Not really surprising, since rubidium has about 80% of the electrical conductivity of iron. With a steady magnet, I don't see a clear movement. This is far from a perfect setup, but rubidium should be slightly paramagnetic with a value of plus 17. With the setup set up, I couldn't help but test the cesium too. Same results, just with weaker eddy currents since cesium is only half as conductive as iron. The last element is mostly famous or infamous for being radioactive, but it is also toxic to us and aquatic life with long-lasting effects. It is damaging to organs in smaller quantities through prolonged or repeated exposure. It ignites if heated in air and in powdered form it can even ignite itself. In other words, it is pyrophoric. However, it isn't fissile, so no risk of a nuclear boom. Thorium. Finally, I have a small piece of this element. Named after Thor, the Viking god of thunder, lightning and strength. Quite fitting for an element that is currently being tested as a safer alternative to uranium for nuclear reactors. Thorium is radioactive, but it emits alpha particles that cannot penetrate the glass. However, some of the elements that thorium turns into as it decays emit beta and gamma radiation. So I can detect some radioactivity outside the glass. When beta particles hit the glass, it can also turn into X-ray radiation from what is known as Bremsstrahlung. Pure thorium is not easy to get hold of and this is by far my most expensive element sample measured in cost per gram. The thorium is coated with a black layer of thorium oxide but shouldn't corrode further since it is stored under argon. With such a small sample in a heavy glass ampule, it may not be easy to detect anything with the magnet. But let's give it a try. There's no doubt. Despite the weight and diamagnetism of the glass, the tiny piece of thorium is drawn towards the magnet. 
This indicates paramagnetism with a larger value than the previous alkali metals, which is confirmed by the official value for thorium, plus 97. So here we are. I have shown you 74 of the elements in high purity near a magnet, in my home. In part 1, almost 7 years ago, I said this. I haven't been able to afford all available metals yet, but will expand in the future so I can update this video. I would say this dream has now come true. Thanks for the strong interest and great feedback on this series through the years. It helps a lot. And a special thanks to my patrons. You're all awesome. Thank you so much for helping out. It's really appreciated and important for a niche channel with monthly quality uploads like mine. Check out my Patreon page if you haven't seen it yet. Alright, it was exciting to experiment with all these potent elements. I'm glad I could visualize most of the magnetic susceptibilities despite the odds with low values and glass ampules being in the way. If you like experimenting and learning from it too, but are not ready to take health risks and spend thousands of dollars on it, my sponsor is my best tip for you. Brilliant.org is a problem-solving website where you can learn to think like a scientist by performing your own thought experiments. They have just launched a new course called Science Essentials, where you can learn more about for example the scientific process and measurements in an easy to understand way. I'm a fan of science and always like learning more about it. If you want to learn more too and believe in active learning, I highly recommend you go to brilliant.org slash 75 and sign up for free. As a bonus, the first 275 people using the link will even get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Then you can do more crazy stuff without any safety warnings from me. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Remember to subscribe if you are new here and watch this far. Click like if you don't dislike what I do. Bye for now.